All right, we got new Classroom of the Elite Episode 6 cut content of Season 3 from Mr. Baseless Yupa. Now, there are technically spoilers, apparently. Stuff that could be animated in the future, and I've got the timestamps, so I'll be very careful about this. 6 is here, and so am I. Covering all the cut content, this time starting off Volume 10, which happens to be my third favorite volume in the entire series. Really? Which is only topped by Volume 7 and 11.5. So naturally, I am really looking forward to seeing this volume adapted. And honestly, we're off to a pretty decent start, adapting only around 90 pages. Only which 90 pages, a, which is better than like 150, I guess. Lot, but at least it's not being jammed into two episodes. And even if this adaptation might disappoint us all, the one thing that will never disappoint is me making all these videos on the cut content for every single episode, every single week. Thank so, you, Mr. Basil sure Supan. Make like on the video as it lets me know how much- Y'all know what to do. Give a guy a like, give the sub to the channel if you haven't. You great, guys gives great videos, cut content all the time. subscribe to the channel to catch my latest uploads as soon as possible. With all that being said though, let's finally dive in. The volume starts with a Hirata monologue, which as expected did didn't fucking make it into the anime. All the monologues are usually cut off in the anime compared to the light novel, huh? And look at Hirata's eyes right here. He's also in the opening. I think the uh, the heart of Joker, right? Like, the card, the fact that he's a Joker, right? What does that imply? Was it the Ace of Hearts or was it the Joker of Hearts? I think it was the Joker, right? It starts with the Hirata monologue. What is this which, guy, man? Because he seems like this perfect person, but clearly there's a reason in why he's in Class D. We don't know his defect yet. If you look at him, and the way even he smiles is very sus, with man. The Hirata monologue, which, as expected, didn't make it into the anime. Which is really sad because we get parts of his backstory along with his thoughts during a moment that's going to happen later in this volume okay. during the special exam. So Hirata arc, I mean, they kind of set up in an interesting moment where basically he is not in danger because, you know, he's like the hottest, most popular guy in Class D. Sorry, Class C now, right? Why would anyone vote for him to get out, right? He should be the most protected, but then... It's interesting how the idiot trio is suddenly all like antagonizing him, saying, oh, of course you won't worry, you're Hirata compared to us, right? But I feel like there could be an interesting scenario where a bunch of dudes that's jealous of his popularity and good looks might start voting for him out of spite. I wonder how this will develop. I won't go into details since it's probably gonna get adapted, but- Oh, oh, oh. Okay, coming up, 116 to 132, apparently I have to skip because this is uh, cut, cut, this is cut stuff that could be animated, so we're gonna skip that. The next timestamp is 545. Incredible arc. Moving on to the results day. One difference is that Shabashira only announces the final exam results here and the special exam gets announced at a later date. We Why? also get to see some of the results. Is that some classic Chabs, you know, hitting us with a steel chair out of nowhere, no anticipation, no preparation because Chabs fucking hates us? Results of the exam, Chabashira mentions that Sudo is the student who improved the most the entire year. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing with the most improved awards, okay? Because improvement implies that you started off at a certain point, right? So if you're always getting like, um, I don't know, l l let's say a trivial number on a scale of 100, you're always getting 80. It's gonna be hard to get like an improvement of 20% margin, right? Like that's all you gotta play with. But if Pseudo starts at fucking 10% and now he scores 50%, suddenly that 40% gap seems fucking huge even though he's still shit. So technically the most improved reward, it's like, it's a pretty bullshit award in my opinion along with TK and Yamauchi also improving their scores despite being bottom two in the class. The student who placed first in the class was Yukimura and Ooh. second was Koenji. Keisei and Koenji. I think this is mentioned in season one too about how Keisei was able to match rival Koenji in academics in like um, the volume light novel one, right? The light novel volume one. And But like this stuff wasn't mentioned in the anime. So a lot of people probably think that Yukimura Keisei is like useless. But in fact, academically, he's like peak. Which Kyo finds interesting because he's never seen Koenji take studying seriously and he thinks that Koenji could easily take the first place if he tried. Horikita yep. placed third and Ayano Koji at 18. Which sounds bad until you re Perfectly measured because he wants to be background character still, right? Realize the anime only has 25 students per class instead of 40 like the light novel. Wait, there's 40 fucking students in the light novel? 18 out of 40 sounds pretty... I don't know, he's, that's, that's like the halfway points he wants to hit, right? 
18 out of 25. That's... Uh-oh. So, Kyo, as usual, is chilling around the average section. After that, we actually got a conversation between Nagumo, Ayano Koji, and both of the Horikita siblings. What? Kyo stumbles upon Nagumo and Man... Why are they cutting out these fucking integral scenes? Nagu talking. Nagumo also talks about wondering who was the guy who spread all these rumors looking mm. suspiciously at Ayano Koji. After that, Susune arrives there and the one who called her was actually Nagumo. And then Nani? he invites Susune into the student council and says vague things such as he'll be keeping a close eye on her. Date me, Susune. <laughs> trying to get a reaction from Manabu. Of course, the Rika chat does not care at all. Bro doesn't give a fuck about his worthless little sister. And leaves. Also, Bye. this is where Kyo tells Suzune to try talking with her brother before graduation. No. Compared to the anime showing it after... Will there be some kind of redemption scene between the Horikita siblings before Manabu graduates? I feel like there needs to be some kind of closure, right? Manabu can't just graduate and leave the school and, and, and that's it. And like, what? Suzune and Manabu never, like, I don't know, like, redeemed themselves? I feel like there has to be some kind of moment where the big brother might accept the little sister. But that won't happen until Suzune realizes, like, you know, that chasing after her perfect big brother is the last thing that he wants. He wants her to be her own person. But the fact that she's trying to be in pursuit of Manabu is the root cause of all her failures because she's just not him. You know, you don't have to be him. Just be yourself. For the UN conversation. Then we finally have the special exam announcement. The anime did a decent job adapting it, but as usual, there are skipped scenes. Okay. First up, during the announcement, Kyo noticed Chabashira being really anxious while announcing it. Anxious? And finding it hard to get words out of her mouth. I think that in the anime, usually Chabashira enjoys torturing us and just hitting us with surprises out of nowhere because she has zero faith in us, at least back in season one and season two, because obviously she's been betrayed, not betrayed, but her expectations have been betrayed every time, uh, every time there's been a new class 1D, right? But finally, a new cohort has shown in is getting hard carried by Anakoji and she actually has some faith now. So for the first time, it felt like she was not trying to fuck us over or be, what's the word? intentionally ignorant i'm leaving out the details i feel like she actually felt like damn i'm sorry kids like i know you guys tried your best but this time it's actually it's, it's not even in my control someone else has replaced us sakai dad you know this is not fair while the anime portrayed her as indifferent towards the school's decision then we have a rule which the anime skipped and that is if the bottom and top placements are tied mm. then another poll will be held deciding between the two people who are tied there it is that is an important mechanic, and I think that's going to tie into maybe Hirata and some of the bottom three getting on, on the cutting board, right? I think that, so, the bottom and the top, right? It's got to be Hirata and what, Yamauchi? And then they're going to do like a split decision, but like, there's a lot of losers in this class that doesn't like Hirata, man. But then again, we do have all the girls on our side, but it's going to be interesting how this plays out. And if they still end up tired, the school will intervene and decide themselves through a special method. Oh, a special method. And Sudo's special method? What do you mean? Conversation being cut short. In the LN, Koenji straight up says that he's one of the most useful students in the class <laughs> and they should not try to go after him. <laughs> that is probably... I, I love Koenji, but at the same time, it's like... You should try to lay low and not try to like antagonize yourself in the situation where... Your competency doesn't really matter in this in this game, in, in this special exam. It's because it's a popularity vote, right? It's a popularity in who you're close with. So the more you say narcissistic shit like this, I don't care if he's correct. This is not that kind of game. You can be objectively correct and still get casted out, right? Like people who are not liked are probably gonna get casted out. So if Koenji starts shit like this, which Again, objectively true that he's probably the most worth, like, um, what's it called? The most useful person in this room. It's not a good look, but I, I have no doubt that Koenji will be safe. Like, he's not going to get kicked out. It just doesn't make sense for him to get kicked out. He even says that after this exam, he will reform him. I agree. In that case, I will, as they say, turn over a new leaf. Beginning with this exam, I will become a useful student. One who contributes to the class through the various exams and such. Don't you think that would be a rather significant boost for a class? Sorry, sorry, boon for a class. Well, 
everybody kind of knows how cracked Koenji is in terms of, let's say, academics or athletics. So him dangling this in front of them... Yeah, maybe. Would they, would they really be okay with that? I mean, I feel like at the end of the day, Yamauchi is still way more hated than Koenji right now. ...himself and start taking things seriously. Though Kyo thinks that he's just bluffing and doesn't intend to follow through. Moving be hilarious if Koenji makes it through and he's like, I fucking lied, you idiots. I'm, I, I tricked you again. ...on to the Ayano Koji group scene. This was also a scene which was cut short with lots of skipped stuff. Such as, Kyo saying that he's glad the group won't... Keisei has determined that we should avoid making a large group ourselves. Thankfully, everyone in the group, Haruka included, was convinced by his reasoning. That eliminated the possibility of one of them getting caught up in my strategy and losing as a result, which made me glad. Hmm. My strategy. Don't be caught up in his strategy Koji, what you doing? And end up losing. They also talk about who they're going to give criticism votes to. The majority of the group agree. Thanks for this. Uh, thanks for the tier one sub, man. Trees I appreciate it, Tiger. Even Kyo himself and the wait, 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 what is this one? So the members of the Anakoji group, <laughs> I, yeah, that, I guess that is a group name. In season two, they were trying to figure out a name and they were trying to pick a leader, right? So I guess we are just the Anakoji group had at least tentatively had decided to use our criticisms to vote on Koenji. No, not Koenji. Our opinions on the matter varied. Some thought that we needed Koenji, some were disregarded. In my opinion, Koenji is very risky. His capricious whims could have major negative impact on the class. He is very volatile. Koenji is super volatile, but we know that he can be very useful if he would actually fucking help out. Yamauchi, on the other hand, this dude, he's just terrible all around. It just makes sense that he should be the one getting cut. And Kiyo himself, and the person who disagrees with Koenji was actually Sakura. Seeing that even though Koenji what? who disagrees with Koenji was actually Sakura. Alright, this bitch needs to die. Sakura needs to die right now. This bitch was the one that was going for Koenji's throat the most? Nah. Fuck Sakura even more, dude. I hate Seeing her. That even though Koenji is hard to work with, he already provided more for the class compared to herself. Another wait. change was that. Wait, 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 what do you mean? Himself and the person who disagrees with Koenji Disagrees with Koenji? What do you mean? The way that Mr. Baseless Yupin just talked about it, sounds like Sakura was the one going against Koenji, but then he just follows it up with saying how Sakura admits that Koenji is better. What? He already provided more for the class compared to herself. Another change was that I'm kind of the way that he said that against Koenji into admitting that Koenji is better. This is very. She wants Koenji to say the the phrasing here was very weird to me. Maybe I misunderstood, but okay, she's on Koenji's side. I Ryuen was actually sitting at the same cafe Ayano Koji group was at. And Palette. this is where his conversation with Horikita happened. Yo, in the anime, Ryuen shows his cleavage like no other. His upper pectorals, like the entire of his upper and mid section is like just on full display. In the light novel, bro has his shirt all buttoned up. Why did the anime make Ryuen into such a slut? What the fuck? Also, Kiyo wasn't that interested in their conversation. But Sakura and Haruka thought that she might be in danger, so they asked Akito and Ayano Kochi to go with her. However, Kiyo stops Akito and goes there by himself. The conversation was- Yeah, look at this! Look how much cleavage he's showing and what kind of shirt is this, bro? What the fuck? That's the anime. Though they did cut out a scene where Horikita hints that she's aware Ayano Kochi did something to deal with Ryuen, which was something she gathered from a talk between Ibuki in okay. one of the earlier volumes, if I remember correctly. And another thing to note about this scene is, Ayano Koji thinks that Ryuan will most likely be expelled, mm. and he can't think of a way he manages to survive. But he will survive. I think that Ryuan has some kind of plan. You know, the fire is back in his eyes. He's been absent throughout the last, like, six episodes, even though he has been present at, like, the nighttime meeting. But, you know, in the anime's perspective, bro has been just AWOL. Bro's missing. I just don't think that a character like Ryuen that's been built up for two seasons will be let go this easily. I think that someone else will go in class C, uh, class 1D now, I guess, for them. I hope it's not Ishizaki, Ibuki, Albert, or any of the, you know, the core group members around Ryuen that we do know. I hope it's someone like Manabe, you know that bitch that was bullying Kay and got her face smashed down into the fucking ground? The girl that we also broke her ankle, by the way, intentionally trying to blame it on Suzume. I mean, I'm being mean to Manabe, but I feel like she deserves it. Fuck it. Then we have the call between Kyo and Kay. 
this was yet again mostly the same though they did cut out a funny moment where Kay thinks that mm. Kyo will get criticism votes from Sudo because he thinks that he has a crush on Hori Keita <laughs> That's actually pretty funny. Sudo would vote for us because that we're too close to Susanne this guy. Now we move on to the Ichinose scene which was also mostly the same at least up until a certain moment and that is when Arisu approached her oh. in the LN. Instead of Arisu, it was actually Asahina. This girl, she's missing. Sunflower girl is fucking missing. I don't trust her, by the way. Everyone's a fucking double agent in my eyes, bro. I don't care. I don't trust anybody anymore. Fucking Kamaru lied to us with the fucking stolen beer. The second year student related to Nagumo, who came to talk with Ayano Koji. I don't blush. I don't Asahina trust you. here actually tells about Ichinose's plan and what Nagumo is trying to do. And she wants Kyo to help Ichinose. No, I don't trust because you. Because she feels bad for her. Oh, wait, 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 Good call. Hold up. 5.45 to 6. Ah, we already fucking lost. Anyways, Asahino's like, it's kind of involved. Good call, but fuck. None of you guys mentioned it except Mr. Pragmatic 18, 16, sorry. Thank you, Mr. Pragmatic 16, for looking out for me. Kyo and Hiyori both quietly read at the library for a while, after which Kyo asks Hiyori about how Class D and Ryuen are doing, and Hiyori mentions that Almost everyone in Class D has decided to expel Ryuen. Fuck, it's that bad? Shit. I mean, if you spend your entire time just enforcing violence on everybody and running your class like the Yakuza leader, it does make sense that you would become the prime target for a situation like this. What's Ryuen gonna do? Threaten to fucking beat the shit out of everybody? That's just gonna make them want to vote him out even more. What could Ryuen possibly do at this moment? Do we need Hiyori to make a speech? Do we need Ishizaki and Albert to start fucking crying and say that we're family and that we can't, you know, get Ryuen out? I just... How does Ryuen get saved? Because in the anime, I didn't realize that situation was this bad. I thought that people were kind of, you know, maybe gunning for Ryuen, but at the same time had a little bit of... I don't know, some sort of loyalty, some sort of twisted loyalty towards him because he has shown them results at least until now so like damn he is fucked i don't realize it was this dire and he himself is just chilling as if he's accepted huh. his fate hiyori also says that she thinks class d doesn't have a chance competing with the other classes if they do decide to get rid of ryuen and this is They're also fucked. where we see kyo thinking that he doesn't want ryuen expelled why though because getting rid of ryuen right now he is like right beneath us right can, Cause like I guess the help that Ryuan could offer us is better than getting rid of him right now. Which he himself was surprised by. After that we get a moment with Horikita where Kyo wonders if she's thinking the same Why? Put simply it was because I had high hopes for the strategy Horikita was trying to pull off. If she could make it happen then I wanted to support her as much as possible. But I wasn't going to tell her that right here and right now. That's right. Don't let her know. Strategy Manipulate SM, her. And he's actually really intrigued by how she's going to handle this. Which is followed by Hirata asking to meet with Ayano Koji in order to discuss some things. They both agree to meet privately after classes are over. And this is where he gets approached by Arisu and Kamuro. Okay. While he is heading over to meet with Hirata. Sadly, the anime cuts out all of my girl Kamuro's lines. Which really... She didn't say anything, huh? She straight up didn't say anything. She got nothing to say. She felt guilty for trying to fucking lie to us. We caught your fucking fake ass and be your shoplifter my ass. That's because she also asks Arisu... What's the deal with Ayano Koji? And Arisu even tells her that she's known Ayano Koji for a long time. Another huh? thing to note, oh. Arisu sucks because she also asks Arisu, what's the deal with Ayano Koji? And Arisu even tells her that she's known Ayano Koji for a long time. So even though we've only known her from when we came to school, from Ayano Koji's perspective, because Arisu and obviously her dad runs like the white room shit before, at least worked with him, you know, Ayano Koji's dad. Arisu was like observing Anakoji straight up like through all her childhood. I don't know how long this is, but she didn't participate in the white room, but maybe she was, you know, walking around with her dad in the white room, just like observing these test animals. So like she saw the upbringing of Anakoji's childhood. Yeah. Okay. Another thing to note is Kyo thinking that Kamuro and Arisu are quite similar. After that, the three of them walked towards Similar. One is the fake, one is the real. Is she really the real one? 
because she didn't need white room teachings to become this much of a manipulative sociopath compared to Anakochi. Is, is that why she's a real genius? The school special building, which was isolated. And if you guys can remember, this was also the place where the pseudo- Yeah, pseudo fight, right? The special building, right? This is where all the club activities were held. I remember this shit. Incident with the cameras took place during season, season one. one. After they arrive there, Arisu tells Kamuro to leave and says that she wants to have a private conversation with Ayano Koji. And this is where Arisu talks about her father getting suspended and was likely thrown together to expel a certain person. Here's the thing I don't understand. Like, you would go out of your way to have the special exam where only one person expelled, but like, you really think that like the best product of the white room would just like be expelled at this moment? Like, if this truly was Anakoji's dad or his like posse, his group, the white room influence trying to do this, it just doesn't make sense that this would somehow lead into Anakoji getting suspended. Like, nobody in their right mind would ever expect Anakoji to be the one to get expelled here. Unless this is all necessary preparation for whatever plans they have in the future to then actually get him expelled, right? So, if Sakai Anagi's dad's gone. And if we have, you know, uh, Anakoji's dad and the White Room people taking kind of over. I don't know how they did that, but if they did, now we're just, like, on the line of expulsion and just kind of competing against the school, huh? We're going into a new phase in Classroom of the Elite where the antagonist becomes the school itself? Referring to Ayano Koji, compared to them having this talk in the middle of a busy street with Kamuro present, like the anime showed, genuinely baffling as to why they did this because they cut out a really iconic Kyo and Arisu illustration. And they which, cut it by out. by the way, they showed in the season 3 PV. Oh, what the fuck? Why'd you cut it out then if you had the PV? As well as the ending song. What the fuck? Finally, the scene ends with Arisu looking towards the camera. And this, this, yeah, the camera. Something about the street lights, the camera. camera and Kyo wonders if that was intentional what is that? or just a coincidence. What is that? What is that, huh? Are they looking? All right, white room people just fucking stay like observing us like that. I like clearly this is hinting that Anakoji's dad and the white room people have taken over and they're observing us very carefully, and right? And that is all the cut content and changes for this week's episode. Okay. Honestly, a surprisingly decent episode, especially visually because I really liked the art direction in this episode. And characters actually managed to look on model for the most. Yes, yeah, on model. Look at Ryu and his titties. Mm -hmm. this part. With all that being said, though, that's it from me, guys. You guys know what to do. Please give Mr. Baseless Yupin a sub. I like his videos if you did. Now, there is some stuff that were kind of spoilers that may be reordered in the future episodes, but I think for the most part, this new arc is very interesting because now we actually have expulsions on the line. We've been kind of playing around with the concept of expulsions, but no one has really gotten officially expelled yet because, you know, you can buy them back. So it's a little cheap in that sense, but at the same time, you need to have a ridiculous amount of points to actually buy them back. We can't just ask Nagumo to fucking lend us 20 million points so that we can save whoever is going to get expelled here, right? So again, will Yamauchi be the prime target? Will Hirata be the prime target? Will those two be the top and the bottom? into some kind of special exam, right? Because they mentioned the mechanics is if there's a tie between like the top and the bottom, right? Then there's a chance the tie break will be decided through another special method that we don't know yet. Things are going to get super spicy in the next coming episodes, man.